had been doing a normal training exercise and had a freak accident. His answer was, all I saw was blood and we got in the car and we left. So the day that Alma got hurt, we were conducting patrol training in one of the warehouses in Akasaki. And we're the final dog team to do the training. Alma was still pretty amped up from the training, which is very typical, uh, especially in a patrol dog, to where they get done biting and then they're still like wanting the bite. So they're still just like ready to go, ready to get another bite. Um, but at this point, the training was over with. So we started to leave the warehouse. Uh, I had her on a short leash and then nothing was really out of the ordinary. Um, she didn't like make any noises. She didn't bark, yipe, whine, anything like that. Uh, I just happened to look down and I saw a bunch of blood all over the ground. And I looked at Alma and she like looked completely fine. Like she wasn't crying or whining or anything. And then I saw more blood. And then from there, I just, I laid her down real quick and looked to see where the blood was coming from and saw her foot. And it looked unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, I knew it was pretty bad from just the amount of blood. And then when she was trying to stand on it, it was kind of collapsing on itself. Like it wasn't wanting to hold her weight. Uh, so I just, I scooped her up in my arms, uh, put my hand over the wound to keep as much pressure as I could. And then pretty much just started yelling at the other guys to call the vet, um, get a unit so we can rush to the vet real quick. I had gone to the next and I was just purchasing supplies uh, for us. Captain Balzer was at home due to the initial outbreak of COVID-19 and our office is so small we're not able to maintain six feet of social distancing. So Captain was working, teleworking from home, and I was in the office in case a military working dog needed me. And as I was getting ready to walk into the next, Captain Balzer called me and said, are you at the office? No, ma'am. Chief Reyes just called me. Chief Lionel Reyes is the kennel master for the Sasebo Complete Kennels. And he said that Miss Alma had injured herself, but we didn't know the extent of the injury. So I was getting ready to head back to you know, the office so that I could go ahead and treat her. And Chief Reyes called me while I was still on the phone with Captain and told me that Alma was coming to lights and sirens, which means that the injury is severe enough that it's potentially life-threatening. And I immediately ran to my car and flew back to the clinic so that I could get out all the materials I would need to treat whatever type of injury she came in with. Uh, got in the back of the unit, uh, holding her all the way from Akasaki to main base to the vet clinic. Pretty bumpy ride, trying to keep her calm, while also keeping my hand, like maintaining pressure on her leg. And at that point, she was starting to like squirm a little bit, kind of starting to freak out. I think it was starting to like hit her that she was hurt, she was feeling a little discomfort. I just started getting everything together that I could. When they arrived, it was MA2 Rubash and MA1 Schrader, who is Alma's handler. When she got there, he was hanging on to the bottom of her leg, so the bottom of this foot. He had his hand wrapped around it, applying digital pressure to stem the flow of blood, and his pants were covered in blood. All I could see was a lot of blood and not the full scope of the injuries. And then we went ahead and cleaned up the wound so that we could see the full extent of it, that it was a large laceration. We bandaged it and applied a lot of pressure to stop the bleeding that she had from the bottom of the foot and started IV fluids. Captain Balzer was already on her way. So when she arrived at the clinic, we went ahead and sedated Alma so that we could fully explore the depth of the injury. When we looked at it, finished cleaning it and unbandaged it, it was seven out of eight digital flexor tendons had been completely severed. So we contacted our 64 Foxtrot Major Shane Andrews, he's a clinical specialist who was assigned at Okinawa Branch. He looked at the pictures and said, she's going to need surgery. It needs to happen soon to be able to reconnect the tendons if there's any hope of her still being able to serve as a military working dog. We had our MLC food inspector, Mr. Cusano, 
who was reaching out to the airlines and trying to identify how we could get her on a flight if we needed to fly her commercial. But given the height of COVID, our options were limited. So we also reached out to one of our captains in Iwakuni, Captain Colleen Dwyer, who worked with the Marines, and the Marines started figuring out if there was a way for them to transport her. At the same time, our chain of command, Public Health Activities Japan, that controls all of veterinary services in Japan, was going through USERJ and the commanding general to get clearance to be able to move a military working dog. We had Army, Navy, and the Marines working on figuring out how to move Alma. By the end of the night, every commander in Japan knew who Alma was. At nine o'clock at night, MA1 Schrader, MAC Reyes, and myself got into a security patrol and we drove to Iwakuni. At 06 the next morning, the ops team from Iwakuni Kazavacked her on her own C-12 to Okinawa, where she received emergency surgery to reconnect the tendon and start doing her physical therapy so that she could go back to being a full military working dog. Uh, we got to Okinawa Saturday morning, and then from there, she stayed at the vet clinic all weekend down there, and Monday morning, they operated on her. Uh, it was about a five and a half hour surgery. And then after the surgery is where like the real challenge was because I stayed down there for a month with her rehabbing and Alma's a pretty crazy dog, you could say. She just has a lot of energy. So I wasn't allowed to let her walk or stand up or put any pressure on her leg. She was in a cast. This was probably the most taxing thing I've ever done for four weeks was to keep her under control and just not like jumping around and being a dog because they don't, they don't know. So she had, I don't know if she had, had any idea that she was hurt. Um, she just wanted to go, go, go. But it was a good experience. I learned a lot from the team down there. We were able to do some physical therapy with the Army Special Forces physical therapist. Uh, we did laser treatment for her tendons, which was really cool to help with and to learn about from the experts they have down there. And then once we got back to Saspo, we started more therapy. We started swimming um, to build up her endurance and strength. She had little ankle weights that she eventually started wearing to just walk around, build strength in that leg again, going up and down curbs. Uh, very, very basic stuff. The turnover with MA2 Angelo was actually, it was pretty easy for me because once he got back from dog school, he started coming to all of her appointments with me. He started coming to uh, the pool with us to see what we were doing. And then he started helping. And then as time progressed, he started doing a lot of it himself. So when I was in dog school, I was told that, I, hey, you're getting into Dioma. It's gonna be a good challenge for you, you know, especially as a new handler, she's gonna She's gonna test you. She's gonna, uh, she's gonna do her own thing, and you know you're gonna have to definitely build rapport, and it's gonna be a very like rewarding task for you once you finally get to there, certify with her and whatnot. So it's definitely been a challenge um, as far as the physical therapy aspect. It's it's nothing we're not really trained in as MWD handlers, but it was very new and it was very it was something new to learn. So, and I'm glad I did learn it just because it's, it's, it's been, you know, obviously more knowledge that I can assist for other NWDs that need physical therapy or if, you know, a dog, another dog that I have down the road goes down or something that, hey, this, this dog might have a chance if we try some physical therapy with them. So, um, stretching her every day, learning about tendons and joints and ligaments and it was, it was definitely a challenge. So normally with, a, normally with a military working dog, when they have a severe injury like that, normally it's very, they're very easy to be just, you know, kind of just, hey, we're just gonna medically retire. We're gonna fix the dog, but medically retire them. They're not gonna be able to, to uh, perform um, in the aspect that they were capable of before the injury. But uh, with, you know, the recovery and the physical therapy and, you know, the boot, uh, MWD Alma is definitely back, 